Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the WellMed Charitable Foundation Caregiver Teleconnection. We're starting a new series today entitled Our Health is Our Wealth, and it's a health promotion series for caregivers, and we'll have four sets, and we'll be telling you more about those, the ones different from today, but today we're going to start with nutrition, and we have our experts, um, Elliot Montgomery Sklar, who's a public health doctor, um, excuse me, he's got a doctorate in public health, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a little bit background for him. He's, he's a public health professional focused upon supporting the health of the public through academic work, research, and service. He has led healthy aging programs for seniors and for caregivers in Canada, Florida, and on the web. Dr. Sklar is an associate professor of healthcare sciences at Nova Southeastern University in Florida. He publishes and presents his work internationally, which is focused on the complexity of issues related to aging and caregiving. Now, Lucy Barilla has a master's degree in social work from McGill University. She is presently working as a consultant for a health network in Montreal, Canada. She's been involved in various research projects and has published numerous articles related to caregiving issues. She has lectured at several universities and colleges on innovative approaches to caregiving and presents annually at national and international conferences. Lucy's a consultant for private industry in the United States too, including her work with the WellMed Charitable Foundation and clinics in Texas. In addition, Lucy would like you to know that she was a caregiver for her own mother for about 10 years. And with that, Elliot, Lucy, take it away. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. I do wanna quickly also mention that we will be holding an additional 30 minutes after our session today that will not be recorded for those who want to ask more detailed questions or their personal experiences as it relates to the topic. Now, our series this month focuses on health promotion, which sounds like a cool buzz term um, but it's actually a very important and often overlooked field within public health and health care. Health promotion is the uh, process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health. And that's the formal definition. And that's really the goal of our series this month, which we split up into four programs in which we'll cover ways that you can increase control over your health by making small changes. And today we'll talk about nutrition. Next week, we'll talk about physical activity and mobility. And then we'll talk about mental health. And finally, ways to manage stress, which we know comes with being a caregiver. Now, I preface by saying we are not nutritionists, though we did consult with one in the development of our program today. Uh, our focus is really to talk about nutrition in the context of caregiving, because nutrition has such an important impact on the health of caregivers and care recipients, and there are very unique issues and risks for both groups when it comes to our diet. Well, thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Evelyn, and welcome, everybody. Yes, today our focus is on nutrition, which is crucial for so many reasons for caregivers. According to the Administration for Community Living, caregiving also can take its toll on caregiver nutrition. Mm -hmm. Limited time to cook or shop may result in um, reaching for sweets or picking up fast food. We all know that, which don't, uh, you know, which don't need a lot of preparation or advanced planning. You know, nutritious, being nutritious, you can fall short, including um, protein and fluids, as well as fibers, vitamins and min minerals from fruits and vegetables that may not be present in convenience items. In fact, in 2019 study found that high caregiver burden was associated with poor nutrition among caregivers. That leaves the caregiver at risk for malnutrition and in turn more susceptibility to physical effects even of stress. The good news is that eating a healthy diet can reduce the negative effects of stress. So while caregivers are, are uh, rightfully focused on making sure they provide healthy meals for those they care for, 
It's very important for caregivers to keep their own nutrition and hydration at the top of their priority list. One of the greatest obstacles to caregivers feeling and feeling the ability to put more effort into good nutrition habit, in the reality, it's time. It can feel overwhelming to add to your already full to-do list, but there are small things you can do, which we will be discussing today. So let's start off with hydration. I think it's a great place to start because water is almost free. So we can begin with a tip that's really very much accessible to most people. Um, I'm curious to know um, if any of you know how to tell if you're dehydrated. You can press star six if you're on the phone or you can unmute yourself. You Zoomers know how to do that. Put your hand up, use the chat room, un unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you. I get a headache. When Very I don't common. Have water. Yeah. Very common. Any any thoughts? Anyone know how how to tell if you're dehydrated? There's some a chat here. Dry skin. Yes. Uh, I think there is a test with thumb in forehead. I'm not familiar with that one. Could be. A lot of people think that you can do a, um, a pinch of the skin on your hand to see how it tends up and if it goes back quickly. Um, that's most commonly what people think uh, is a good way to uh, exactly skin trigger, yes. Um, a lot of comments here about headaches and um, uh, so Evelyn, you're not alone in that. Um, but actually the, the skin test is not the best one, especially for people as they age, because our skin okay. gets thinner, right? Yes. So if you, if you pinch the skin of a, of a young baby, it'll go back immediately, whether they're dehydrated or not. So actually the best way to know if we're dehydrated is by keeping a check on our urine. Doesn't that sound fun? But clear, clearer urine is actually a sign that you are better hydrated, whereas more concentrated yellow, darker urine is a sign typically that you're more dehydrated. So it's not so easy for caregivers to know necessarily if their loved ones are dehydrated. But most of us actually are chronically dehydrated. Um, we should be drinking on average about eight cups of water a day, eight, eight ounce cups. 64 ounces of water in total. Um, but hydration varies for different people. It changes depending on the weather. For example, in the summer, when we're perspiring more, we need more water. Um, so that that old uh, adage of eight, eight ounce glass <laughs> is not necessarily um, the case for everyone. And we can also get hydration, water, moisture from a lot of foods. So it really depends. But the majority of the American population is chronically dehydrated, which does lead to headaches, as many of you have mentioned, imbalance, fatigue. And these are all very important things for caregivers who have people depending on them. So uh, it's very important that we recognize, obviously, how important hydration is, and especially for someone with dementia as well because someone with dementia might become dehydrated if they're unable to communicate or recognize that they are thirsty or if they forgot to drink. And this can lead, like I said, to headaches, to increased confusion, but also to urinary tract infections and constipation. And this can make the symptoms of dementia worse. So hydrate, dehydration rather is dangerous no matter your age but seniors are particularly more susceptible to fluid and electrolyte imbalances than younger people. Dehydration occurs when your body loses more fluid than it takes in. So while anyone is susceptible to dehydration, the reason that older adults are more at risk is because our kidney function decreases as we age, meaning more water may be lost through urination. And there's also different health conditions. The ability to retain water can be reduced by certain chronic illnesses like diabetes, dementia, kidney disease, also as side effects to certain medications. Seniors often take a lot of medications like diuretics, 
blood pressure medications, which can increase again water loss through urination. So I always recommend drinking water. I'm lucky because I happen to love water, but a lot of people don't. I don't think I'm part of a wide majority. Um, so if you have a loved one who doesn't like to drink, try to find something that they do enjoy that is limited in sugar. Again, we're looking for small changes. So if you're caring for someone or you, or you yourself don't drink water, I'm not telling you to go and drink eight glasses of water a day. But there are small things that you can do. For example, if you're someone who likes drinking juice, try to mix half water, half juice. And as time progresses, maybe even less juice. Um, I always tell people to try to avoid soda as much as possible. But if that is what your loved one prefers, for example, try to find sodas without caffeine because caffeine also dehydrates us. Many people don't realize that drinks like coffee, cola, and some teas with caffeine dehydrate us actually more than they hydrate us um, because they have a diuretic effect. Again, we pee more when we drink those things. So it's a very important reason to recognize why water and electrolyte enhanced drinks might also be important. And um, this is a very important uh, issue. Many people don't recognize <clears throat> the importance of electrolytes. And electrolytes are important for everyone, but more so even for seniors, as I said, because seniors are at a greater risk for dehydration. Now, we get electrolytes um, from our foods, usually from leafy greens, fruits, meats, nuts, legumes. And fluid imbalance can cause a shift in our electrolytes. And electrolytes are essential minerals that have either a natural positive or negative electrical charge when dissolved in water. Very scientific. But they play a vital role in our body function. And there are three electrolytes that I'll talk about. So sodium is one of them. And sodium is needed to conduct nerve impulses to contract and relax muscles and also to maintain the proper balance of water and minerals in the body. Many of us will know if we consume very salty food, we'll feel more thirsty. Um, that's the way that our body knows how to process sodium and how to restore that balance. Now, potassium also helps maintain normal levels of fluid inside of the cells in our body. It helps muscles and also it helps to regulate our blood pressure, which is so important. And finally, magnesium. Magnesium is found in nuts um, primarily. It also supports a critical role in brain function. Um, it supports actually over 300 bodily functions from producing energy to growing muscle to maintaining our heartbeat. So it's very important, obviously, that we have proper levels of electrolytes. And again, the best way to get that is through a proper diet, but we know that isn't possible for everyone. So especially for seniors, um, electrolyte drinks can sometimes be recommended. And we have a list here of some of the ones that are um, most recommended that have the least amount of sugar. Um, and it is also important to know that some waters you can buy now that are electrolyte enhanced. So these have namely sodium, potassium, and magnesium in them, like Gatorade. Um, sodium is really the priority as it's the primary electrolyte lost in sweat and the primary electrolyte affected by us overhydrating. So this is especially important as the summer months approach. And it's very important that we think of these potential drinks to be as free of sugar as possible. Um, that's why again, water is great. We need to remember that these store-bought drinks like Gatorade, as I mentioned, contain a lot of sugar, sometimes artificial colors, and they make them a less than ideal hydration solution. So again, we have here this list. Vita Coco is a great uh, drink that you can uh, consume for potassium, as an example, but not everyone likes how it tastes. You can, again, blend some of these things with juice or with other things that people enjoy. Um, I also really love the idea that we've shared before of getting reusable water bottles with straws for yourself and your care recipients. You can get them really cheaply on Amazon or at Walmart, 
And it's a great example of practicing good habits together. Um, but some of these bottles have infusers in them as well. And you can put pieces of fruit like lemon or other things to enhance the flavor of the water. And the great thing about all water bottles is that they can be doubled as exercise use for hand weights. So that's something that we'll actually talk about during our program next week, because we like to make use of what's around, like canned goods. Um, but I wanted to see if anyone had any questions, and I see that there is a chat. Is mm -hmm. sodium table salt? Well, table salt does contain sodium primarily, yes, um, but sodium can be found in other things too. For example, most processed foods have a lot of sodium in them. Um, anything that has MSG will be higher in sodium too. There's a lot of, lot of things that we don't think about um, how much sodium is actually in our food supply. Did you know that celery has a lot of sodium? Yes, uh, it does actually. That's a good healthy one. Naturally occurring. Yes. I think there's something else in the chat. Oh. Celery uh, water. Uh, yes. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Do you chop it up in a blender? Yes. <laughs> I love it. Well, Some this people is like great. cucumber in their water. Ooh. Sorry, Lucy, go ahead. No, I'm saying this is what's great about everyone sharing little tips. So thank you so much. That's a lot of very important information. You know, we receive emails from time to time from caregivers. I'd like to share one that we received. And it goes like this. I was so happy to learn about this program. I'm a caregiver for my mom, who used to be the most amazing cook. As a result, I never bothered learning. I was very lucky that though um, through my adulthood, my mom would bring me a ton of prepared food every week. <laughs> lucky lady, huh? She has Alzheimer's, which has uh, progressed, and now I live with her to take care of her. One of the greatest challenges in this journey for me has been not knowing how to cook and not having the time to learn while working from home and providing care. Mm. I've been buying prepared and frozen meals, which I know isn't the best. Recently, I had a physical and have gained weight. My blood pressure was high, and so was my blood sugar. My doctor told me I need to cut back on salt and sugar, which is pretty much in all of the prepared food I've been eating. I'm a single woman in my 50s, and I have no idea where to begin. Okay, so first of all, thank you so much for uh, emailing us, and uh, let's see how we can respond to all of your needs. You know, many of us know we should eat better, you know, but having time to think about planning your own meals can seem like a luxury when you're a caregiver. How can you think about nutrition, much less to do anything about it when you have so much to do in your own caregiving world? But it's important to find a way, okay? You may have heard this before, but it bears repeating. And you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else. And I am concerned about all, all your medical issues that you talked about. So it's maybe a wake up call. So little steps at a time. Eating nutritiously is one of the best ways you can do that. So let's start. Small steps, they certainly add up. So how do we eat well? You can become a healthy eater by making simple changes. Here are some ideas to get started. Ask for a referral to a nutritionist. I think that's important. And look to see if there are any cooking classes in your community that might be of interest to you, you know, if you have uh, respite care or you can go online, add something nutritious to your current meal regime instead of taking something away. OK, so I'm not saying like continue, but for example, go ahead and keep eating ice cream, but add chopped veggies to your eggs in the morning and uh, your pasta at dinner. OK, so it's just making you aware uh, of taking little steps. Try to think of some of the foods your mom used to make and see if you can find easy recipes to follow online. You know, many also have videos that walk you through each step, which I have to say that I use that very, very often. You know, find healthy substitutes. For example, 
Uh, switch from white rice or pasta to whole grain versions for extra fiber and vitamins. Cut down on high processed foods and foods with added sugar. We're going to keep saying that over and over again, including sugary drinks. They're really, really bad for you. Even if you stick with processed food, some are better than others, and a nutritionist can help you learn about food labels and how to make better choices. For example, foods that are less processed mm -hmm. have a good ratio of protein to carbohydrates and lower in fat. Try to shop more around the perimeter of the grocery store. For most of them, I hope yours is too, where items are refrigerated. That's often where healthier options are located. If these suggestions seem overwhelming to you, take one at a time in whatever order you wish. All right, so are there any comments before I move for, uh, along? We had some uh, chats. Elliot, you want to take those? Yeah. Uh, Mara had shared that uh, Costco online has a Vita Coco hydration mix, um, which has only eight grams of sugar, which is pretty good. Um, she said she purchased the tropical orange flavor and uh, that Costco also has a brand called Nectar uh, Powder, pack no sugar electrolyte mix, um, which comes in different flavors too. So thank you. Those are great tips. Thank you for that. Okay, so I think one of the really good things about uh, sort of cooking and nutrition is to plan ahead for easier food preparations. That's really open. It's really very important. So planning ahead can really help and make grocery stores also, you know, many grocery stores have items already chopped or prepared to make things easier. For example, you can get mushrooms already sliced to add to a jar of uh, tomato sauce and add some fresh basil to simmer in it. It's really very tasty. Make some whole grain pasta or a rotisserie chicken with some vegetables that you can microwave in a bag it can be an easy option for a healthy meal. You know, keep on going. Uh, keep uh, A non-going shopping list is also very important. Maybe a notebook or a small whiteboard in the kitchen. Write things down during the week when you think of them. Use a slow cooker, prepare meals the night before and plug in the cooker while you're out during the day. If you're not comfortable with that, it's okay. You can still use it. And it's really a really good method of having your food prepared. Um, you can place it in the refrigerator in the morning and heat it up when you come home. Speed up cooking with a, a program programmable pressure cooker, such as an instant pot or an air fryer. Double a recipe and refrigerate or freeze leftovers for another uh, night's meal. Store leftover soup, sauces, and veggies in airtight bags or containers. That's what I do. I, I always make, if I make a pasta sauce, I make enough and I refrigerate it, for, uh, freeze it actually for another day. Cut extra veggies and save them for another meal or a snack. Stock your pantry with low sodium, low fat canned foods. Buy things when they are on uh, sale if you know you'll be using them. Beans, veggie stocks, quick cooking, uh, whole grains, tuna, chicken, salmon are great for fast, inexpensive, easy meals. You know, if you take a can of tuna, put a little bit of lemon into it. You could put mayonnaise if you want to with a nice big salad, makes a wonderful, wonderful meals. I also think that it's important to ask for help if you need that. You know, if you have family or friends available, invite them to help you. It's fun sometimes to help you with preparing meals. You know, they might want to come over and prepare with you, show you recipes. Um, even chopping vegetables, it's it together, uh, preparing all kinds of sauces or marinades, and maybe hopefully cleaning up the kitchen after dinner with you, <laughs> sharing easy, healthy recipes with you. <clears throat> or you can ask for their helps. You know, you can ask them, for example, uh, if you need to go shopping, would they be able to stay with your mom? for a little while. So it's really a way of planning everything so that you can really put nutrition uh, as part of your daily routine. You know, even as so I do have to say that even with support and help from mothers, getting into the habit of eating healthier takes time. I wanna share something with you. 
It takes the average person about six weeks to create a habit, whether it's good or bad, okay? It takes time. So start with small goals that you can easily achieve. Small goals will go a long way and give you confidence to strive for more. So the National Council on Aging has some amazing information, resources, recipes on their website. So as you can see that, it may be helpful to have someone else make meals or use a service such as Meals on Wheels, which brings meals right to your home. Uh, and again, for more information, you see it on the website. So if you click on it, you'll get all that information. Are there any questions or comments or suggestions at this time? Yeah, some comments. Boy, I, you started something, Elliot, with the water thing. <laughs> you want to take <laughs> we we had we had a rousing discussion of sparkling oh. water <laughs> and <laughs> and the different flavors in which they come and, and where you can get them. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll I'll pick up on that uh, in a just in I think one or two slides where I'm going to talk about some of my favorite things and uh, I didn't include sparkling water, but I'll talk about it. <laughs> okay. Hey. So let's look at it. what are the benefits of eating well? I guess most of us know it, but with these tips and guidelines, planning, buying, cooking, and eating healthy meals won't seem like such an effort. The rewards are worth it by eating well. You can, believe it or not, increase your energy level, feel better emotionally, strengthen your immune system, reduce the risk of developing infections, get to or maintain a healthy weight that, you know, lower your risk of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, reduce recovery time when you get sick, strengthen your bones and your teeth. So these are really true facts. So I think it's extremely important to try and look at your nutrition and how you're eating. Um, okay, so again, um, I've said an awful lot, and I know I saw that there was a lot of comments. I'm going to leave it to Elliot I, if you want to respond to the water questions or continue with our discussion. You know what um, I would like to, what if you don't mind, <laughs> I'd like to point out that on this slide, these are all real foods, and I think people have gotten away from eating real food. And I, you know, one one of my mantras to people is just eat real food don't eat chips don't eat snacks don't eat fast food you know don't eat junk food eat real food and the benefits will present themselves in your health um right. un undoubtedly um and the, so I, I did get a question as to what it is that i'm drinking in this cup <laughs> and the, the fact that I am having an, uh, an iced coffee while I'm giving this presentation about the importance of hydration and water is not lost on me. Um, <laughs> but I have been up for many hours and have already had one and a half liters of water today. So um, I am right on track. I do drink a lot of water. Um, Diane had asked, I'm a sugar addict. Any tips for how to cut down? Yes. Um, start reducing. Sugar is actually an addictive substance. We don't think of it in that way, but that's why there's more and more and more sugar pumped into our foods because in part, we want to then eat more and more and more. Um, so the more sugar that you consume, the more sugar you're going to crave. So as you slowly start cutting back in your sugar, um, hopefully your cravings will slowly diminish too. I am not a huge fan of recommending um, products that are artificial sweeteners, even things like stevia, which is natural, um, because your body still responds to it like sugar and your craving for sugar will still persist. But that's just me. If I may, Elliot, there's a question Please. that I have. Um, I'm wondering about coconut sugar. And, you know, I think that that might be a, a bit of a solution. What are your thoughts on that? Sure, absolutely. There are things like coconut sugar, honey, uh, date syrup, but these are all forms of sugar that will still all contain um, high grams of sugar and high levels of carbohydrate. All sugar is sugar. So even if it is refined or unrefined, it will still have a lot of actual sugar. 
unfortunately. Um, some people do find that switching to artificial sweeteners has been great for them. And I think everyone's different and you have to do what works for you. Um, I used to really like sugar a lot and I just started cutting back over time. And now I really don't uh, like sugary sweet things very much. So we're all a little bit different. And I think try some things that might work for you. Just try cutting back a little bit. I just, just want to say. I just want to say that I used to love to have three spoons of sugar in my coffee in the morning and oh. I, cut, I cut back and now I have to say that I enjoy my coffee with just a half a spoon of sugar. It takes a little bit of time, that, but don't give up. It works. And we also really don't recognize the addictive property that sugar has. And that's why the importance of cutting back slowly, it, it, you know, not to liken it to like, I don't know, cigarettes or something, but you know, they say to cut back rather than just going cold turkey, that's more effective. So much in the same way, you can think of cutting back on your sugar, even if it's slightly. And uh, so I, uh, without further ado, I'm going to share some of the things that I have found are helpful for me that I enjoy eating right now. Um, dry roasted edamame. Uh, is an excellent snack because you can get it at most grocery stores and it costs about $2 for that bag. I share it because it's an excellent, excellent um, snack option that's even cheaper than nuts. Um, it has uh, a lot of fiber and a lot of protein, which is very important. Plus it is very good for heart health. Um, so that is uh, one option there that I share. I have an image here of a prepared food because some of us still lack time and need the convenience of some things that are prepared. So this is a meal from Trader Joe's. And if some of you have a Trader Joe's nearby, um, I highly recommend their stores because you can get prepared foods that are lower in terms of preservatives. Some of them are made um, in Canada or in uh, countries in Europe. And this dish is actually imported from France. If you can see the ingredients on your screen, you can pronounce all of them. They are all natural ingredients, including the spices that they list. They don't just say assorted spices, um, but this is a cod um, Provencal meal, they call it, which has uh, wild rice and ratatouille. It has 400 calories. Um, it does have 21 grams of fat, which is higher than I would like to see, but it has 24 grams of protein, which is uh, a good amount of protein for a frozen meal, especially at 400 calories. What I really like about this meal is that it has only 14% of your recommended daily intake for sodium, which for a prepared meal is much, much, much lower than you would find, for example, in a lean cuisine which has closer to one third of your daily recommended sodium. So for caregivers who do still want to have some prepared food options, look at labels, try to find things that, um, that you might not find at your traditional grocery store, but stores like Aldi, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, they have some other options. And if you can read all of the ingredients, that's a big plus. Uh, I try not to consume food whose ingredients I don't know how to pronounce. Um, another thing that I really enjoy right now is Chobani Zero Sugar Yogurt. They have them in a variety of different flavors, and it's almost pure protein. Uh, it's only 60 calories per yogurt. There are zero grams of sugar. And yes, there is an artificial sweetener, but it's not very sweet. Uh, I don't find that there's very much of it. I always recommend uh, frozen blueberries. Uh, you will always find at least a pint of frozen blueberries in our freezer um, because it makes a great snack, but we know that blueberries are so high in antioxidants. They're also great for brain health. Um, and if I feel like having a treat, I do like vanilla halo top with my blueberries and sometimes some strawberries too, um, because then you really feel like you're having a dessert. These are just some lower calorie, healthier type of, of options and snack ideas that I wanted to share. Um, and then back to the sparkling water, because everyone was all talking about sparkling water. Sparkling water is great. It's a great option because right now you can get it in so many different flavors. 
my recommendation is to make sure that the flavoring comes from a natural source. So back to Trader Joe's is a good example. They have a whole aisle with uh, a shelf that has, I don't know, 10 or 12 different flavors of sparkling water that are unique to their stores. They also have seasonal flavors. Um, they had at one point uh, a pineapple sparkling water, which tasted kind of like an old fashioned pineapple soda without the sugar. I also really like Polar brand. They make sparkling waters that you can find at any grocery store. Um, they have one that uh, is flavored orange vanilla, which tastes like a, an orange julius or an orange julep. And uh, another that is uh, black cherry, which tastes very much akin to Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia ice cream, if you're a fan of that. <laughs> um, and of course, there's the La, La Croix or La Croix, however you pronounce it, canned waters, which are very popular now. They come in a bunch of different flavors and same with buble or bubbly water. Um, again, depends how you pronounce it. But these are great options because they keep water exciting for people. And I was glad to see that so many people were a fan of, um, of the different sparkling water options. We have some more comments here. Um, Minerva said, and read your food labels, a lot of things have hidden sugar. It's, it's an excellent point. Sugar and sodium hidden in a lot of prepared food. Um, and we had another comment, artificial sweeteners give me migraines. Any suggestions? Yes, avoid them. Um, <laughs> A lot of people are very sensitive to artificial sweeteners. Fortunately, now there are a lot of more natural types of artificial sweeteners, like stevia I mentioned, um, but they're all going to still mimic uh, an insulin response in the body. So that's why I recommend have sugar if, if you're not diabetic, cut back on it if you can. Um, I try to avoid things that... Um, that are artificial. Um, we, Diane just said, I've heard art artificial sweeteners stimulate the brain like real sugar, therefore increases sugar cravings. Well, yes, this is uh, found in some research, you are correct. It also has been found to trigger a similar response in the body as sugar. Um, so your insulin response will be the same. And just recently there was a study published about potentially dangerous effects of these artificial sweeteners even the natural ones like stevia, which have been found to be potentially linked with cardiovascular issues, including stroke. So I, that's why I like to stick to uh, the real deal as much as possible, even though right here on this screen, I'm showing you a Chobani zero sugar yogurt, which does have an artificial sweetener and Halo Top as well. But these are things that I don't consume on a regular basis. Um, these are more treats for me. Um, and if I'm going to eat cake, then I'm going to eat cake. And it's something that I do enjoy. Um, and life is made richer when we're able to enjoy food and not feel badly or guilty about it. And I think that also comes from having a more balanced diet. Elliot, may I make a comment about the yogurt? Please. Yeah. A lot of people don't know. I mean, it's really about the added sugars because any milk product has sugar in it. Milk has sugar. You know, so you can't go with the total sugar. It's look for that added sugar line. That's the one you want to avoid. Absolutely. And there are also um, uh, milk options now that have lower sugar, like Fair Life Milk, because it is ultra processed. So they take some of that uh, sugar out. Um, lactose, anything that ends in oat is a sugar. You were correct, Evelyn. Any questions or comments? Anyone want to share their favorite food or things that they're enjoying? Um, I, I always learn so much from what other people have to share. Come on, folks, if you're on the phone, press star six. I've got this little website I can see. If you've done that, we'd love to hear from you. We have salmon and veggies. <laughs> yeah, salmon and veggies is great. Anybody? That is what, that is what I had last night. Oh, you're showing off now. <laughs> I think that eggs are really a good source of uh, protein, you know, and so um, there's so many ways, so many things that you can do with an egg. 
you know. Egg whites are better. Yeah, chopped egg, yes, for sure. If you have cholesterol, for sure. Um, omelets with lots and lots of veggies. It could be even a supper meal, it doesn't have to be only for breakfast. And so just think about, as Evelyn said, look at things that are food, normal food and what you can do with it. I think that soups are amazing. I mean, you can throw in a whole bunch of vegetables into a pot and put the spices in it, which is garlic, whatever you want. And it's very, very nourishing and it really, really freezes well. And soups are a great way of hydrating. Exactly. What about and what do you think um, about those prepared salads, Elliot? Uh, the ones in the in the bag? Yeah, no, no, the ones that have like little kits because it's really their dressings that have all the sugar and the salt. So if you have oh, a yeah. better dressing at home, you could just pick up one of those and have yourself a nice salad, but it would be healthy. You you asked such a good question. Um, so I did mean the kits in the bags that you can buy at the grocery store that have all kinds of things in them, seeds, nuts, cheese, um, but they have they have dressings that are highly, highly, highly processed. Um, I love Trader Joe's, but even their salad kits are horrible for you. Um, they're extremely fattening and they're very deceiving in the in the labeling because one of those bags of salad has three to four portions. So what I recommend that people do, and this is what I do, is I look to those salads for inspiration as to how I can recreate it with real ingredients on my own. Ah. And I've made some great uh, different, like I, I had a salad last week with kale and mango, and um, it, I was just inspired by one of those kits. So. Um, that was a good point. Karen asked, what about hummus? Hummus is great. Look at the sodium content on it and to make sure that it, it doesn't have too many preservatives. Um, again, hummus at Trader Joe's happens to be very good. Diane said that she loves omelets for dinner, which is great. Omelets are wonderful. Mara shared that roasting garbanzo beans in the oven is a great idea to put over salad. Yes, it is. You can just buy them in the cans, rinse them off, um, dry them. Uh, I do that often myself. They also make a great snack. Diane shared that oatmeal with a bunch of stuff in it, fruit, uh, chia, uh, cacao chips, etc. cetera. Um, Mara shared oven baked sweet potato fries, spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash. I, there's so many comments, so I apologize because they just keep coming in. <laughs> I, love, I, I love this because we, we can all relate to our enjoyment of food. Diane said, I have a chips problem. Are there any that are good for you or are they generally bad? <laughs> I love the way that you posed the question, Diane, because if you're enjoying something, is that really bad for you? But on the other hand, I, I understand that it can be hard to limit our portions of chips. So um, I don't know of any chips that are really good for you. Um, chips are not <laughs> generally a food that I would say are very- They're not nutrient. real food. They're not, they're not nutritionally rich. Um, I, I, ha I love chips and I love Terra chips actually, which are the chips that are made of root vegetables. They're a little bit healthier, but I wouldn't consider them healthy. So my suggestion, Diane, is to switch and get small bags of chips, individual serving size. That can help you better portion, but enjoy the chips. Life is short. <laughs> um, Mara asked uh, or said uh, zucchini spaghetti is good. Uh, there are devices to make the spaghetti. Yes, there are, and they're super cheap and easy to use. You can get them on Amazon for a couple of dollars. Um, because otherwise buying those spirals in the stores can become expensive. Um, these are great, great comments. Karen said, uh, what are the studies on cholesterol and eggs? I've heard conflicting stories. Yep, there are a lot of conflicting stories. So um, eggs, whites have no cholesterol. All of the cholesterol is in the yolk. So if you have concerns about cholesterol, better to simply avoid the yolk. Um, and, uh, so I, I echo Evelyn, what you shared earlier about egg whites, um, being a good, healthy option. 
Uh, how about green plantains sliced thin and baked in the oven? Nice chips like to have with guacamole. Yes, yes. Um, and I've switched from chips to air popcorn, banana chips with no salt. These are all great, great pieces of advice. Um, I like to say something about air popcorn. Yeah. If it has one of, if it has butter, a butter additive, it is not good for you because a no. lot of those butter additives have really bad stuff in. So I would get the air popcorn with no, no butter stuff. Yeah. And if you're someone that enjoys popcorn, better to get an actual uh, uh, old fashioned popper that you can make and get the kernels. And that way, you know, that you're eating real food. More That's comments coming in. No <laughs> butter stuff, buzzkill. Oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Minerva said I use the old fashioned air popper. Woohoo! Yeah. I I, I appreciate this rich discussion. So we're we're running low on time. So I'm going to continue really quickly because I want us to talk about the mind diet. Though I think this was incredibly helpful. Um, and remember that we will stay after our program to answer any specific questions or if you want to share anything. Um, but we've been asked so many times about the role that diet can play in reducing or preventing cognitive decline. And you might have heard of the MIND diet, which has been linked in some studies of Alzheimer's patients with slower cognitive decline. Now, there is no formal research, and I will say this, that links the MIND diet with reversing Alzheimer's, but there is a lot of evidence that supports the connection between diet and the prevention or slowing progression of diseases that uh, deteriorate our cognition. So the MIND diet is an acronym that stands for the Mediterranean Dash Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. It's a hybrid of the Mediterranean diet and DASH diet, and research suggests that it might slow the development of dementia or decline in brain health, and that is based upon a study that was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's and Dementia. The MIND diet focuses on the intake of plant-based foods and limits the intake of animal products high in saturated fat. The emphasis, again, is on plants. Now, what's noteworthy is that this specific diet urges a higher consumption of berries and leafy green vegetables. And we have here a list of do's and don'ts, but fueling up on things like blueberries, as I was mentioning before, might appear to prevent cognitive aging. And likewise, there's a link between eating leafy green vegetables like kale, spinach, and collard greens with lower inflammation and oxidative stress. And these are two factors associated with Alzheimer's disease. So both types of food are rich in antioxidants and can help to reduce inflammation in the body. Uh, there's also been a study that looked at selenium and memory, again, found in nuts, and evidence showed that selenium improved cognition. But what is important here is not to go out and buy supplements of these things. You can buy potassium supplements, magnesium, selenium, they can be harmful. So they're best when consumed through food. And Brazil nuts are actually the best source of selenium. So before you make any major changes to your diet, this is something we really wanted to make clear. Speak with your doctor, see if your healthcare plan includes the consultation of a nutritionist. Um, I know as well for people with Alzheimer's disease, proper nutrition can be a challenge for a variety of different reasons. That's why, you know, for example, Lucy talked about soup. It's a great way to uh, covertly make sure that someone is also getting moisture in their food. Now, you might have seen some conflicting news about diets and Alzheimer's, and there is. Um, and that is because we don't know, people don't live in a vacuum, in a, in a bubble. So it's very hard to say that this one thing made that change and that genetics weren't you know, to play a major role, et cetera. Um, and we have a chat here, Diane asked, is this important for Parkinson's disease too? Yes, absolutely. Especially because some of those things that we were talking about are integral to our neurological system. So that's why proper nutrition is very important to support our health as best as possible. You might have heard about the blue zone. The blue zones are a couple of places in the world where people live the longest and they have been studied 
to see why that might be the case. The only blue zone that we have in North America is in Loma Linda, California. And back in 2008, Loma Linda Medical Center data showed that only 5% of their patient population had dementia. They're still studying this um, because when researchers went to communities outside of Loma Linda, they saw increased rates of dementia and stroke. Now, people that live in Loma Linda are mainly Seventh-day Adventists. They eat vegetarian meals, exercise regularly, have strong family and community ties. So the blue zones really show a lot about the relationship between health and um, our behavior. Lucy, I don't know if you want to, um, to just uh, quickly read yeah. that. Well, the thing is that, I mean, we're a bit running out of time, so we can talk a little bit about it later if some of you. I was going to talk about the fact that um, a lot of seniors, if you're caring for someone with dementia and they refuse to eat and the effects that that has on their health, especially if you have a, uh, a loved one in long-term care, has been a big, big issue um, because for some of them, they're just not, uh, they, they don't finish their meals either for different reasons because they just are not able to pick up their spoons or their forks and there has to be different alternatives. So if you do have someone living in long-term care and if you see that they're, they're changing, they're losing a lot of weight, it could be due to their nutrition, even if they're becoming more confused. Uh, and it's important to either go there, I'm sure you do, but to, around mealtime, just to make sure. There are different ways of uh, enticing people to eat a little bit more. Smaller portions are really important on a small plate. So it seems as if, you know, that uh, if finger foods are okay if they're having trouble with cutlery. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And in, if there's a cultural diversity, you know, some people don't like certain foods it's okay to bring um meals into the into the residence you have to ask permission so what i'm trying to say is if you're taking care of someone at home and they refuse to eat you don't want you want to make sure and if they like something why not serve it to them more often it does it really do they really have to have breakfast eggs and lunch whatever whatever they feel like eating i think it's important and try different things and obviously a lot to make sure that they do drink. So I could say a lot more about this. And if anyone wants to talk about it after, I'm going to be around for the half hour. And I'm going to pass it over to Evelyn because she always has a lot of good information to share with us. Yes, which many of you have heard before. I'm going to do it really quickly so you can get to the, you know, the fun part with Elliot and Lucy. Um, but you know, most of you, that we're going to send you a questionnaire with resources and these slides, which are have a lot of hot links, you know, that will take you to the places that you're really thinking about and want to go to. But if you're not registered for today, either if somebody gave you the phone number or gave you the link, you're going to need to register with our WellMed Charitable Foundation, customer service representative. The way you do that is by calling 866 390 6491, 866-390-6491. And you'll be really happy you did that because you'll not only get the questionnaire with the resources, but you'll get the monthly calendar. And we've had, to, we still have 11 presentations left this month. Three of those are the ones that Elliot has spoken about. You know, we're still gonna have physical activity and mental health and stress management on Wednesdays with Elliot and dear Lucy, but we also have um, coming up caregiving for people with Parkinson's, 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's disease. Um, we have a Spanish session by Dr. Prodario, who's a pretty wonderful presenter on dementia and family dynamics. We have dear Lucy on dementia and inappropriate sexual behaviors. We have why caregivers should confront not avoid a dementia diagnosis, which is a really important one. We have dementia and ambiguous loss. And the last one will be on April 27th, how to develop a growth mindset. Oh, no, no, that's not right. This is Jamie Heisman. And he changed it last, last month, the last one of the month, he did one on how to 
um, get toxic people out of your life. It was very interesting. Only I know I think I wasn't the only one who thought, well, what about if you have a family member who's toxic? What do you do about that? You know, you don't want to push away and and totally eliminate your family from your life. And that's what he's going to talk about this month. That's on April 27th. It's part two of how to deal with toxic people in your life. So please come back with us. We want to make sure that you are our community of participants. And I would like so much to thank all of you, our presenters who always do such a beautiful job and so much research and information. And good job on the food. Whoa. <laughs> I want to thank our caregivers for everything that you do, especially those of you who are on the line today and who have participated um, so brilliantly. It was really fun. And I'd like to thank the WellMed Charitable Foundation for all that they contribute to the community, both in the SOS centers, the stress buster programs, the clinics that they run. Um, what else? The WellMed, the caregiver teleconnection, the um, podcast, the air SOS, and uh, ah, the podcasts that they do that are on www.caregivertelleconnection.org. So with that, I want to thank you all. And I am going to stop the recording so that you can have some personal time with Lucy and Elliot. And I thank you all so much. Thank you, Evelyn.